Hey guys, Rob Shoecraft, 3 Storm Fitness here. Last video of this series, part five. The exciting adventures of ending elbow pain, golfer's elbow specifically, inside elbow pain, medial epicondylitis. It's kind of been my go-to intro for these videos. It's working. Uh, okay, so we're gonna talk about strengthening, strengthening the area. So, just a quick review. Elbow pain can be caused by a number of things, probably caused by a number of things simultaneously. Diet, that's been the biggest change for me, but all this stuff has been important. So diet, supplements, which again, I didn't have much luck with, but some people swear by them. Try them and find out. Uh, you have um, exercise equipment selection and grip variations. That's been huge, huge, huge for me. Ring pull-ups are game changer. Um, three, we talked about, or four, we talked about uh, mo mobility, yeah, mobility exercises uh, and soft tissue work, also very, very effective. You can work that into the beginning of your workout, depending on, on what you're doing, end of the day, recovery methods, all sorts of stuff. Do it. I talked about some different tools you could use. Watch those videos. Now we're going to talk about strengthening the side. So it's kind of like if you ever worked <coughs> on kind of strengthening your knee. Knee's pretty common. A lot of people have knee problems. So, you know, that could be all sorts of problems. So we talk about mobility, like my shoes. <laughs> all right, I didn't expect anybody to see them, but whatever. Mobility, and no socks, by the way. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, uh, in, your, in, in, in your knee. A lot of the problems with, with knee mobility are your ankles, um, your hips having problems. So again, it manifests itself in the knee. Another problem you have is form. Your lunges, you're not, you're just dropping down. Maybe you're not engaging your hamstrings properly, your glutes, um, whatever. Uh, maybe you're just really tight through your quads, uh, your VMO. And then lastly, uh, or, or, or behind the knee, uh, anterior tibialis, whatever. You gotta break that up with soft tissue work. I'm making, I'm going somewhere here. And then lastly, or not in the last thing necessarily, what a lot of pro people's problem is, is just they have weak musculature supporting the joint. VMO, the vastus medialis in a lot of cases is the problem. Um, so back to the forearm, all those other things that we talked about in the other videos are going on, or maybe they're not, maybe you've addressed them. Maybe you just have weak musculature supporting this area. So we want to address that as well. Because if everything else is going well, if the muscles aren't strong enough to support to support uh, that movement in the connective tissue, the connective tissue is going to kind of suffer. You're going to get inflammation. At least that's what I've gathered. Um, so we want we want to strengthen that. We don't want to completely. There's no like, um, at least as far as I know, like max effort deadlift intensity is not going to help this problem. It's going to be more on the I think like PT type exercises. Um, exercising with high reps, you're not necessarily breaking a sweat, but you're working hard and you're working more importantly consistently and you're allowing for recovery. So I'll talk a little bit about frequency and that sort of thing. Um, this right here is a very nice little tool. It's called a TheraBand Flex Bar. And they make these in multiple colors reflecting multiple uh, intensity levels. This is kind of like right in the middle. So, a few exercises you can do. One of them is called the Reverse Tyler Twist, and I, re I really do this one. I think it's this, I haven't done this one in a while. Reverse Tyler Twist, I don't know who Tyler is, but he's probably doing pretty well for himself, or herself, not fair. <laughs> so, Reverse Tyler Twist, this is the, pro this is the uh, pained arm. I flex it, and then I believe I bring this around, straighten it out, and then extend. That works pretty well. I, what I like better, and this is a Jamie Dreyer thing, I saw him do this, is you pronate here, you twist here, and then you bring it down. So you just get a little better, a little better, I wind it up a little better there. I feel just a little bit more that way. And then another, and then, um, so that, that's good. So basically you're, 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 you're flexing, you're releasing. So you're kind of working, that's more of like a contraction. I mean, you definitely focus on the eccentric portion as well, but that's a good way to kind of, if you think about this in terms of like bicep curls, again, everybody knows bicep curls. You're doing a more of a regular tempo, 
you're filling it mostly into contraction. Now we're talking centric, and eccentric is what really helps build a lot of muscle, but it's also what can cause a lot of pain if you don't recover properly. So that'd be like a bicep curl with a slow release, or slow negative portion. Um, so you could do that with a, with a flex bar as well. You could do um, wind it up and then bring it down slowly. Wind it up, bring it down slowly. That's very nice. Nice, I don't know if that's the word. Another thing you can do, and I'll talk again how to do these, or how often to do these things. You can take like a hand sledge or a hammer, or this is like a, like a I don't even think it's a 10 pound bar, a one inch bar, and lower it down slowly, about six seconds, bring it back up. Lower it down slowly, about six seconds, bring it back up. When you could do about three reps of 15, give or take, with all these things, without causing any sort of pain or really struggling through it, like really struggling through it, like you're able to complete the set convincingly, it's time to increase the intensity. For this, increasing the intensity can either be, you know, you can, well, first of all, buying a new one that's, that's, that's has more um, resistance. Uh, if, if that's not in the budget, you can get, you could squeak by a little bit by doing like, you know, eight second slowing, basically slowing down the intensity a little bit or the, uh, slowing down the tempo rather. With this, you could put clip things at the end. Like if you have like little one pound weights, you can put those at the end. I just put a lot of little pegs and just because of physics and whatnot, it makes it, or you can grip down lower on the bar. That will also help. Uh, hopefully that, that makes sense. About, like I said, 10 to 15 reps, three sets. Every other day uh, is pretty good. That's what, kind of what, I, what I've done. You could probably do it every day, but when you're starting off, I would keep it, I would err on the side of less frequency, maybe two to three times a week. Um, it's just gonna, it's gonna depend on, on you and, and a lot of other factors. Another thing you wanna work, often neglected, is the extensor. So if you put your finger right here on that spot that's bothering you, and you do this, you feel it, right? Okay, so, and we talked a little bit about being with the computer and not being all mashed up all the time. You can, it's gotta go both ways. You gotta work the, you gotta work the agonist and the antagonist and it's, it's all a big happy family. So we wanna do that as well. And this is also great for uh, tennis elbow, the other sport I don't play. Um, so open, if you get a rubber band, this is an iron mine rubber band. I don't honestly know if there's a big difference between this and just things you buy, at, like a bag of 500 that you buy at Staples, other than the price and the color. Nevertheless, I bought it. I love Iron Mind stuff, so I bought their stuff. But you can try this with just a rubber band you have in your office. And open wide and bring it back. Roar! That was me like casting a really hard spell. All right, so you're working all these muscles through here. Um, and you can go back and forth between those two. Like, you know, work the flexor, work the extenders. Extensors or extenders, extensors. I'll screw that up. Um, I think that's about it. There's lots of other stuff you can do. There's like special machines. I don't, I don't know what they're called. I've seen them though. They have like, you can wrap around like each finger and they have these cables coming down and you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with them. I don't have one of them. Somebody will know what I'm talking about. You've seen them in like PT offices and stuff that specialize in forearms. That stuff I'm sure is cool. I just don't have it. Uh, TheraBand, this is like 15 bucks, maybe 10, 15 bucks. Uh, again, rubber bands are quite literally a dime a dozen. And then, like I said, I'm using a bar here, but I've also done it with a, with like a, like a little hand sledge or, or a big claw hammer, and that works really well. So hopefully those exercises help you out. When you combine all this stuff together, you will treat your elbow pain. If you actually do all this stuff, I will be shocked and appalled if it doesn't help you out. Um, if you have any other tricks or stuff that have worked for you, like, like I said, there's millions of things out there. This is just the system that has worked for me over the past couple of years. Yeah, if, if there's something that's worked better for you, um, let me know. I want to know. Uh, drop it in the comments. Again, please subscribe to this vi these, these videos. Uh, I think we just wrapped up like a straight hour of just talking medial epicondylitis. That's, 
That's a good day, guys. That's a great day. Time to eat lunch. Thank you very much for watching. Rob Shoecraft, subscribe to my videos. Have a great day.